What we're going to create here is the Harris shutter effect by using the online photo editor called Photopea. So I've already taken my three shots and it's really important that those shots were taken with no real movement in the framing. So we're going to open those right now and I have the three of them sitting on my desktop. So I click the first one and I hold the shift key down and I select the third one. So all three are highlighted and I click open. They're going to all open, as you can see, in three separate layers. So I'm going to go to the second image and go select all, then edit, copy. I'm then going to go back to my first image and go edit, paste. And just before I click paste, if you look over on the right hand side above the word background in the layers dialog box, you'll see that layer one has been added in. So I'm going to go back to the layer that we just, or the image rather, that we just copied from, and I'm going to close it and say there's unsaved work. Do you really want to close it? I say yes. Then if you notice, this initial image has two layers now. This image has one layer, and it's a unique layer. So we're going to go select all, edit copy, go to the first image again, and do the same thing, pasting it in and it will now be layer two on top. So I'll go back to that separate image, close it, and don't save it. Now you'll notice these eyeballs. These eyeballs, when they're turned on or off, show the layer. If the eyeball is on, that layer is showed. If the eyeball is off, that layer is hidden. Did I say showed? That layer is shown. So I'm gonna turn these layers off to see that the background layer is now selected. I'm going to turn this layer on and select it, and now that layer is active. I can have the eyeball turned on, but do work to layer one if it's highlighted. I know I'm working on a layer if the layer eyeball is on and the layer is highlighted. So what we need to do before we start, you can see that these layers are not quite aligned. See how the picture in the back is moving? So what we need to do is have all the layers turned on, select the top layer, layer two in this case, now hold the shift key down and select the word background. All three layers should be highlighted right now. Then we go up to edit, auto align. Click on this. It's gonna look at all three of these layers and it is going to align them so that they are all perfectly set up. And I'll show you what I mean. Let me click on the background layer. Turn off layer two eyeball. So I'm turning it off and on and you can see that the picture is perfectly placed and now I will keep that eyeball turned off. Now turn off the eyeball on layer one and the same thing. Turn all three eyeballs on. I'm now going to select the crop tool right over here, letter C, crop tool. And make sure up here at the top, deleted cropped pixels is turned on and we will go like this. And I will crop in just like this and click the checkbox at the top. And that's where we're at now. The background layer, we're going to double click on the word background and let's change that to red. And we're going to go to layer one and change this to green. This will all make sense in just a moment. Layer two will be blue. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the eyeballs off for the red and the green or the blue and the green select the red and double click not on the thumbnail, not on the eyeball and not on the word red, but in this area right over here. Double click and this layer styles dialog box opens up. I want you to turn off where it says channels here, turn off green and blue and click OK. Now select the green layer, turn the eyeball on, Double click in this area, not on the eyeball, not on the thumbnail, not on the word green, but in the dark area to the right of the green, double click and turn off blue and red and click OK. Now go to the blue layer, make sure the eyeball is on, double click in this area to the right of the eyeball, the thumbnail and the word blue and turn off green and red and click OK. Now you can see if you look at the bottom corner and the right that we didn't crop enough. So let's crop a little bit more and we can make a selection like this 
And if we don't like our selection, we can move it a little bit. This will get rid of those little weird artifacting that we're seeing. And I think that looks really good and click the checkbox again. So it has cropped the entire area. Now we're not quite done. We're gonna do a little bit of treatment to this to make it look a little bit better. First thing we're gonna do is click on, oh, really it should be our hue saturation. And we're gonna look at our blues right here. It could have been master, but we're gonna to go to blue. Blue doesn't really show up very well. So let's look, if we change this, there we go. We can see we're affecting the blue at the top, but really I wanna affect the blue on the character right there, saturation. Do we need to bring that up? No, we can keep that we can keep that low and the hue, we don't wanna change that at all. So leave that at zero. Now we can click the mask right here. Now this is gonna be fun. We go over here and we select the brush tool, the letter B. And we have to make sure that black is our foreground color. Make sure that we're on our hue saturation, not the layer, but this is called a mask. If we paint with black, we will hide the changes that we made. And you can see there's a little tiny arrow. We could change the color that was the foreground to the background and the background to the foreground. So we want black as our foreground color. With the brush selected on the layer mask of the hue, black is a foreground. We are going to change the size of our brush right up here. Let's change that to about 500 pixels. And we paint back in the blue into this area right there. Trying to avoid the head. Now, if you make a mistake and you go like this, say across the body, you're like, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Go back over here and change the foreground back to white and just paint that back out. Okay, that's looking pretty good right now. Now, I think this looks pretty decent, but I also think that red is a little bit re really red. So go back up here, go to red, take the saturation. Look, if we take that right down, it takes out the red throughout a great deal of the image. Let's just bring that red down a little bit. Bring the lightness. Oh, we could bring, that looks pretty good. And now you can see with the green, this could be green or cyan. I'm gonna start with cyan and let's just see. No, it's definitely green. So we'll go back here to zero. Minus one isn't gonna do much, whoops. But 19 will. So let's go to green, take the saturation and bring that down just a bit, not too much. We really need to see it. We can bring the lightness up a little bit so it's not so intense. Now, I think we're pretty close to being done. So what we would do now is we would go File, Export as a JPEG. This was 100. So let's export this out as 50%, 50%. So the height and width has been changed. And let's click Save. It's going to save to my file space and I will say show in Finder. And that is the image right there. This is one of the images that you would hand in. Okay. Enjoy your work. I think this will be a lot of fun.